Hello. Um, so we want to start looking at transformations in the complex plane. Um, so basically, we want to start looking at uh, in the next couple of lectures. We want to start looking at things like if I have a complex number in the in the um, Argan diagram, right? Say it's represented by you know this vector. The question is, say uh, complex number z. What happens, for instance, if I add another complex number to I add whatever to i to this complex number? How does it change? How does it change this? If I multiply z by another complex number or by some constant alpha times z, what does this represent? Okay? Uh, if I take the complex conjugate of z, I have z, if I do all of these things to this, how does it change the point z? Right? If you take a complex conjugate of it. Alright? If you multiply it by, you know, if I multiply z, take z and then multiply by z to the i theta. Okay? What does this become? How does it how is it transformed? So that is that is the various transformations we want to start looking at. So there are a couple of them that we are going to go through. Alright? Um, and then we'll go to the main one. What uh, for instance, if I have an image, much later, all right, in a couple of lectures, much later, if I have an image, all right, let's say um, this is square in, in an Adam diagram in the xy plane, right, or in the z plane. If this is in the z plane, and I transform it using some kind of a transformation, the question is, on this transformed plane, let's call it a W plane, Right, so this is a W plane. Um, what does this become? Is this still a square or the square becomes a, uh, a circle under this transformation? Okay, so we want to start looking at things, um, things like that. So we'll start with a simple, simple case. Um, so this is that say that given the locus of Z, right, in the Adam diagram, the locus of some function. Right, where this function can take any form, um, it affects the following transformation. So, uh, if I have if I have z, all right, and f of z is equal to, for instance, z squared or two z, uh, what does this transform into? If I have z and I have a function z is equal to z plus zero, if I add another complex number, a constant complex to it, what happens to the original z? Okay, so in this case, we start with translations. Uh, those are much uh, easier to, to grasp. <coughs> so, if f of z is equal to z plus some constant um, complex number, z naught, where z naught is given by this, then this thing here, this transforms z, right? Represents a translation. So you have a point, you just shift it, shift it. Um, by this translation vector AB, right? AB is from, you get AB from the constant that you are adding, the constant the complex, okay? So that is our uh, this translation. For example, uh, if I have, given, given that I have a complex number, Z is equal to, let's say, 2 plus 3R, okay? What is, uh, what is this? complex number. Okay, let's want to show that this is actually a stretch, right? If I just take z and I subtract the number 2 from it, how does it look like? Okay, let's do a couple of those simple ones. So I have this. I just have, um, I have a complex number which is given by, so let's, uh, let's take up this main this space here. Okay. So I have, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, okay, so I have simple grid here. Um, negative, negative, negative three. This is negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on, okay? 
So my first z, the z is given by the point two and three, right? Two and three is a point here. Okay, this is my z. So z is here. Now, if I add another complex number to it, this is basically negative two. What happens to it? Of course, you can compute this, right? So this would be z is two plus three i, okay, minus what? Two. If I just subtract two, the twos go, and I'm left with three i. Now the point three i is basically zero three, right? So three i is zero and three. So f of z, if f of z is less than than z two, right? If it's just z two, then this point z two is here. So basically, it's a translation because when I'm here, all right. If I add negative 2 to it, all I do is that I, I translate this point, I move this point to there. So that's why it's called a translation. Okay? So this is a simple case where we are just adding you know, a, real, a real number. Right? So what happens if I take, um, let's, let's call it, so this is a Z2, let's call it Z3. It's my f of x now. Let it be. Uh, z plus, let's take a, a complex number, negative 1 plus, say, 2i, right? Negative 1 plus 2i. What happens? What does it do to, um, to the original z? So my z was here, and I add its complex number to it, negative 1 plus 2i. So let's see what happens here. So here, z is 2 plus 3i. I subtract 1 plus 2i, what do I get? I'm going to have 2 and this is 1, this and this is 5. So z3 is basically a translation. I'm going to translate 1, which is positive, and then 5, which is up, right? So let's, let's, plot, let's plot the point uh, 1, 5, right? 1, 5 will be one here and then five. Okay. So this point is Z3. So this is saying that basically all I've done is I have translated this point which was here to this place. Z3 is a translation. And the translation vector is given by S. The translation vector is a vector negative one and two. What that means is that I move one unit right to the left, that is negative, and then two units up. So this says that when I add this to this, what I'm doing is that I have to move one unit to this side, so that, that brings me to one, you see. So I move to the left, and I move two units up. See, one unit and two units up. Bam. Z3. So that is why this is said to be a translation, all right? Translation um, with this with this translation vector. Okay? So when you have a complex number, you add another complex number to it. A constant complex number. Basically, you are you are just translating the point. So you can translate it horizontally as we did when we just added uh, negative two. If it's positive two, is going to go this way or whatever that type of complex number is, is basically a vector. Alright? In the first case, we just translated it by the uh, vector of negative 2, 0. Right? Negative 2, 0 will be negative 2, 0. And that is the vector that moves this. There. Okay? So that is translation. The second one we want to look at is um, a stretch or enlightenment, a uniform stretch. Okay? About it. From the origin. So number two, um, number two transformation we want to look at as uh, uniform uh, stretch about or from stretch from the origin. Okay. So if I have a complex number z, 
then the number T Z, where T here is a uh, real, uh, uh, it's a real, it's a real number. Let's say something is a positive R. Okay. This is this represents. This is a stretch. Represents. Represents a stretch of enlightenment. If you like enlightenment uh, or scaling of Z by the factor by the factor factor of K from the origin. Okay. In other words, um, so you have Z, what happens is note that complex number Z can be represented by a vector. So if I have a vector, uh, KZ here just means that depending on K, I'm, I'm going to increase the length of the vector or I can shrink it, right? So it's, you are stretching it or you are scaling it down or you are enlarging it. So that is what it does. When you multiply, um, when you multiply, the complex number by this real number, number k. Okay, so let's take uh, some simple examples and see how this. Maybe I'll put a lattice. Yes, maybe let's leave this and see. Probably use it. So, so let's take a look at them. Um, two, four, five. Okay, so let's let's do this here and take a look at this. So if I have a complex number z, which is equal to let's say one plus two i, okay, um, the complex number z two, which is my f of z, it should be equal to two z. What does it do to z? Right. So z two of course will be equal to twice of this. So two times one plus two i which will be equal to 2 plus 4i. Okay? So if I multiply z by 2, what does it do? Now, my z is uh, at the point 1, 2, right? 1 and 2. If you like, this is, uh, this is a vector. So this is my z. Okay? From here, the vector from here to there. What, what about z2? z2 is 2, 4. So 2 and 4 is there, right? 2, 4 is right here. So Z2 is here. In terms of vectors, this is also from the origin all the way here. Okay? So that is Z2. So you see that in this case, because I'm multiplying by a positive constant, 2 which is greater than 1, what I'm doing is that I'm stretching Z. This, is, this was the, the length of Z. If I multiply by 2, the result is a stretch. I'm enlarging this, okay, twice as much. Basically, that is what, that is what the uniform stretch um, does, okay? Note that if I had multiplied, if I had a Z3, and Z3 was one half of Z, okay? So basically, I'm going to shrink it, right? So this would be half of Z was 1 plus 2i. So this is going to be one half plus i because this cancels out. So basically, z three, z three will be at one half and one, right? Uh, half and one, right here. So this point here, z three will be there. So you see that z three is half of z. So basically, so you are scaling. When you multiply by a constant, you are basically scaling. You are enlarging, stretching it. Um, you know, either increasing or decreasing uh, your vector. So that is uniform um, stretching. So the next few ones we will look at um, rotation, and then we'll also look at reflection about about um, rail houses. Okay. Good.